In this video, I will present the pharmacological actions, clinical indications, and adverse effects of acetyl salicylate acid, aspirin. Aspirin, or acetyl salicylic acid, is a wonderful drug. Daily aspirin decreases the risk of cardiovascular events, such as heart attack or stroke in patients with atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease. Aspirin can be used as nonsteroidal anti-inflammatory medication to reduce pain fever and inflammation. Aspirin blocks the enzyme called cyclooxygenase, or COX. There are two types of COX, COX-1 and COX-2. Blocking COX-1 enzyme produces antiplatelet effect, which decreases the risk of ASCVD, and blocking COX-2 enzyme produces anti-inflammatory effect. When blood vessels are injured, our body tries to stop bleeding. Platelets are very important to stop bleeding during primary hemostasis. First, they come to the site of injury and bind the subendothelial collagen, which is exposed when the endothelium lining is damaged. This stage is called platelet adhesion. Then, they are activated and their shape change. Their membranes form tentacle-like projections, allowing them to grab onto other platelets. At the same time, activated platelets also release several different of substances, including adenosine diphosphate, or ADP, and thromboxane A2. They are very important molecules in hemostasis. They attract more platelets to the site of injury. They activate platelets, which also produce more ADP, thromboxane A2, and other chemical mediators. They make platelets to stick each other. This makes platelet plug larger and larger, as more and more platelets come to the site of injury and stick together. This phase is called platelet aggregation. This whole process is called primary hemostasis. The platelet plug seals the damaged area and stops blood loss. The platelet plug formed during primary hemostasis is weak. During secondary hemostasis, it is reinforced by protein mash made up of fibrin, which is the final product of coagulation cascade. We need to know how thromboxane A2 is formed. Activated platelets can make thromboxane A2 from a molecule called arachidonic acid. COX-1 enzyme helps to make thromboxane A2 from arachidonic acid. There is another COX enzyme called COX-2. This enzyme is not related to platelet effects. With the help of COX-2 enzyme, arachidonic acid is converted to prostaglandins, most of which mediates pain and inflammation. What aspirin does is, it blocks the cyclooxygenase enzymes, non-selectively and irreversibly. But the inhibitory effect is more pronounced on COX-1 than COX-2. We only need a small amount aspirin to produce inhibitory effect on COX-1 enzyme, whereas large dose aspirin is required to block COX-2 enzyme. When we give low dose aspirin, COX-1 pathway is blocked and less thromboxane A2 are produced. Less thromboxane A2 means decreased platelet activity and decreased platelet aggregation thus preventing further clot formation and further clot propagation. It has no effect on clots that are already formed. Low-dose aspirin does not have a pain-relieving effect. Higher-dose aspirin is needed to effectively block COX-2 pathway and to relieve pain inflammation and fever. Abnormal formation of blood clots can cause heart attack, stroke, or peripheral arterial disease especially in patients with high risk of atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease. Antiplatelet effect of aspirin is beneficial in such patients. We use daily low-dose aspirin, 75 to 100 mg to prevent ASCVD events. It decreases arterial thrombotic events, such as myocardial infarction and stroke. Higher doses do not offer additional benefit. 
Instead, it may increase side effects. Another important indication is acute coronary syndrome. Aspirin is used as adjunctive antithrombotic effects in acute coronary syndrome. Aspirin is also used to reduce fever and relieve mild to moderate pain from conditions such as muscle aches, toothaches, common cold, and headaches. 325 to 650 mg of aspirin is needed to produce anti-inflammatory effect. The use of NSAIDs has been largely replaced the use of aspirin as pain medication. Let's see what are the adverse effects of aspirin. When we give aspirin, it blocks the normal function of platelets. The patient bleeds or bruises more easily than normal. Additionally, aspirin can worsen peptic ulcer disease. Normally, arachidonic acid is used to make PGE2 which stimulate the mucus production in the stomach lining. Mucus is a barrier. It protects stomach wall against erosion by gastric acid. This pathway depends on COX-1 enzyme. When we give aspirin, it inhibits COX-1 enzyme. It decreases the production of PGE2 and thus decreases mucus production. This results in less protection against gastric acid increases the risk of peptic ulcers, and if severe enough, it can lead to bleeding from the existing peptic ulcers. Aspirin not only increases the risk of gastrointestinal bleeding, it also increases the risk of non-gastrointestinal bleeding as well. Because it blocks the production of thromboxane A2 in the whole body, some patients with asthma experience bronchospasm following ingestion of aspirin, also known as aspirin-induced asthma. Asthma patients with chronic rhinitis or history of nasal polyps are at greater risk. Aspirin inhibits cyclooxygenase pathway, blocking the formation of prostaglandins from arachidonic acid. There is another pathway where arachidonic acid is converted to leukotrienes. This pathway is helped by another enzyme, lipooxygenase. Aspirin only blocks COX pathway, but not lipooxygenase. More arachidonic acid is converted to leukotrienes. The problem is that, a lot of leukotrienes cause inflammation, bronchospasm, and worsens nasal polyps. This can lead to asthmatic attacks in some patients. Aspirin should not be used in such patients. Rare side effect, but worth mentioning is RISE syndrome. RISE syndrome mainly occurs in children and young adults who are recovering from a viral infection, for example a cold, flu or chickenpox. In most cases, they have taken aspirin to relieve symptoms. In these patients, the combination of viral infection and aspirin can lead to significant liver damage. The liver cells normally convert ammonia to urea, which is excreted in the urine by the kidneys. When the liver damage is severe enough, it cannot convert ammonia, and the ammonia accumulates in the blood and travels to the brain. Ammonia is toxic to the brain. This can lead to serious neurological symptoms such as cerebral edema, seizures, and altered mental status. Another side effect of aspirin is tinnitus, or ringing in the ear. This is dose-dependent. Patients taking high-dose aspirin for pain relief may endure tinnitus. It is rarely seen in patients who take low-dose aspirin for antiplatelet effect. I hope you enjoy this video. Thank you for watching this video. Stay safe and healthy.